looking for T. Corone, the blaze star. Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This video is about a star that's a recurrent nova, T. Corone Borealis. Last year I made a video about what I consider to be the top 10 naked eye astronomical objects. And coming in at number one was supernova. So what could possibly be number one? <laughs> What could exceed a meteor storm and a total solar eclipse and a naked eye comet? Well, the only thing I can think of would be a uh, supernova. <laughs> I have always thought that my best chance for seeing a supernova was the red supergiant star, Betelgeuse, in Orion the Hunter. Last month, I was in Alaska to see the Aurora Borealis which I did see and which came in on my naked eye object list at number seven. Number seven, Aurora. I've never seen an Aurora, but I sure would like to. And while in Alaska, we went to an ice bar where they served us an apple teeny drink in an ice glass. And they said that after downing our drink, we could go outside and make a wish and then smash the glass, which was ice, and the dream would come true. Aurora tonight, purple and red, and a supernova! <laughs> Maybe I got too greedy because I wished for a red and a purple Aurora, and I also wished for a supernova. But there was no supernova, and I'm still waiting. Well, then I was reading Sky and Telescope's March issue, and come to find out that Betelgeuse may have already exploded in a supernova and we don't know it because it takes 500 years for the light from Betelgeuse to reach our eyes here on earth. I was very disappointed to read this about Betelgeuse but I guess a suitable substitute for a supernova which let's face it it's highly unlikely to occur in my lifetime would be a nova. While a supernova occurs when a star dies and explodes, a nova occurs when a star suddenly increases in luminosity thousands of times its normal luminosity for a few days or a few weeks or maybe even up to a month. Novae involve close binary star systems where one of the stars is usually a red giant, excretes some of its hydrogen onto the other star, which is usually a white dwarf. And when a large enough quantity of the hydrogen accumulates on the white dwarf, it causes fusion to occur and a nuclear explosion, causing the white dwarf to suddenly become very bright. The white dwarf expels the gas in the ensuing hours, days, or weeks, and then it settles back down to its normal luminosity. And the red giant again begins to spew hydrogen onto the white dwarf in an endless cycle. One such binary system occurs in the beautiful constellation of spring, Corona Borealis, the constellation that resembles a crown. This star, known as the blaze star, is T. Corona Borealis. I mentioned it in my video on the constellations of spring. In Corona Borealis, we find T. Corona Borealis, a remarkable star known as the blaze star. It's a recurrent Nova, bursting suddenly to magnitude 2 in 1866 and again in 1946, it will surely do so again. At its darkest, it's magnitude 10, just at the limit of a typical binoculars, but we're taking a look at to see if it bursts to magnitude 2 while observing and nabbing your first Nova. And in that video, I said you should keep an eye on T. Corona in order to nab your first Nova. Well, Guess what? It turns out that T. Corona is due to have an outburst any time from January to March 2024. Yes, that's right. If you're watching this in between January and March 2024, then you need to go outside and check out T. Corona to see if it's gone Nova. 
T. coronae is a recurrent nova, and it does so on a regular basis in regular intervals. And the times it becomes a nova is right after the star dims. Well, scientists have been studying this star for a long time, and it just so happens that T. coronae dimmed to magnitude 12.3 last year, 2023. And based on historical records of the days when T. coronae became a nova in the past, is predicted to nova again in the next three months. Normally, T. coronae is a very dim star of about magnitude 10, so you can't see it with your naked eye. You'll need a telescope or binoculars to see T. coronae when it is dim. And if you want to study T. coronae to see if it goes nova, I'll give you the celestial coordinates of right ascension and of declination. And here that is information. And here's a map of Corona Borealis showing the location of T. coronae. And if you don't have a telescope or binoculars, you can still watch for this nova by looking at the constellation Corona Borealis. Though it's a spring constellation, it will rise late in the evenings in late winter, and you can look for it. Corona Borealis only has one bright star, Alfeca, and you can see Alfeca with your naked eye, even from light-polluted areas. So if you look up at Corona Borealis and suddenly it has two bright stars, then that other star is a nova. <laughs> T. Corona going nova. It will be. If T. Corona goes nova, it will brighten to magnitude two. So if it's clear tonight, go out and look for Corona Borealis and look at T. Corona. I'm not much of a variable star person. I might check out the most famous variable star of all. Algol, the demon star in Perseus from time to time, but this is one variable star that you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss this nova because if T. Corona goes nova this year, it won't do so again for another 80 years. So this is it. This is your chance and this is my big chance to see a nova. It's late and Corona Borealis should be rising, so I have to go now. Come on, T. Corona, go nova. Come on, you can do it. Well, take care. Go out and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.